Hey everyone, Arielle Glassman here. I'm the founder and CEO of Common Great, and I'm here to deliver some advice about Give Big on behalf of 501 Commons. So we're gonna talk about creating an omni-channel campaign for Give Big this year. And what is omni-channel, you might ask? Omni-channel fundraising is when you execute your campaigns across all available communications channels, applying consistent messaging, branding, and calls to action across all of them. You create a self-reinforcing ecosystem that could show up in someone's mailbox, in their inbox, their social feeds, including ads, um, web ads, even their text messages. And these messages work in concert to drive people on a specific pathway that will raise their awareness and build their affinity for you and deliver your message enough times for it to become actionable. Let's start with the obvious one-two punch of the Give Big campaign, and that is email and social media. Yes, you should be using both. Email is not dead, and don't listen to anyone who tells you that. It's still our best digital direct response fundraising tactic. It has some deliverability issues, but overall, it's really great at directly soliciting gifts, and it's gonna have a much higher response rate and higher average gift amounts than gifts referred through social media. Social media is really there to help reinforce the message until someone's ready to act and provide peer proof. Some people will click through from social, but 100% you will be leaving money on the table if you don't utilize email. Most of you are already using email and social media pretty effectively for your Give Big campaigns. So what I'm gonna focus on with email is how do you utilize email merge tools to personalize email at scale and improve upon the deliverability we see from commercial email platforms like MailChimp or Constant Contact. Ever done a mail merge like when you thread a spreadsheet through a letter with variable data fields and poof, out comes a bunch of personalized letters you can print? Yeah, same concept, but with email. So why would we bother with this? Well, when you use a commercial email platform, a lot of your emails end up in someone's promotions or update sections of their inbox, or if you're really unlucky in their spam folder. This is not good. We do not like this. But because email merges create real email messages from your actual email account that you can see in your sent box, uh, versus only seeming like they're coming from an address, like with MailChimp or Constant Contact, for the most part, they will actually end up in someone's inbox. And that will hugely improve the effectiveness of email as a solicitation tool. This could be huge on Give Big when everyone and their mom are blasting their email lists using commercial email tools. Your emails will get seen first. And email merges are a lot easier for executing segmented outreach with different messaging than commercial email tools. Unless you're constantly maintaining the same segments you use for campaigns in your email platform all the time. You can also use as many variable data fields as you want. You can land an email to me that says, Dear Ariel, thanks so much for your donation of $250 during Give Big in 2019. Would you consider a gift of $500 this year? That level of personalization beyond first name usually only makes its way into direct mail, but email merges make it easy. You can literally use entire sentences in variable data fields to massively differentiate your copy from segment to segment without having to actually run the darn thing twice. Now, most of you are using Microsoft or Google email productivity tools, and you're in luck because both of these ecosystems allow you to execute an email merge. Outlook does this natively, and there are tons of extensions and apps for Google Workspace that get the job done. Yet another mail merge is a great one for Google that I use with a lot of clients. Before you use these tools, make sure you understand the daily sending limits for them. I probably wouldn't send an Outlook email merge to more than 150 people at a time, just based on the way I've seen ISPs react to that traffic in the past. But with Google, there are actually predefined limits for how many emails or unique email addresses you can send to in a day based on your subscription level. And their daily limits are typically well into the thousands. So you can probably get away with a larger size email merge if you're using Google products. Okay, enough about email. I think you get it. And now we're gonna talk about two channels we don't see used as frequently in these short giving day campaigns. And that would be physical mail and text messages or SMS messages. Let's start with physical mail. In a time when digital dominates our communications landscape, analog efforts stick out in a good way. One thing to name right off the bat is that these days, delivery timelines from the USPS vary wildly. So as we think about using physical mail, we need to use it in a way that will not wet us to it landing on a specific day, because the chances of that happening are very, very slim. I actually think that targeting direct mail to homes during the two week early giving period is probably your best bet rather than those two days of the official campaign on May 3rd and May 4th. To be clear, when I say direct mail, I don't necessarily mean the traditional fundraising appeal letter. I actually think that sending postcards is a great way to utilize physical mail for Give Big. The process is much simpler than designing and writing letters and it's much cheaper to execute too. 
Now you might be thinking, early giving starts next week. Do I really have time to pull off a postcard mailing? The answer is yes. Yes, you do, because there are tons of fast turnaround online printers that will allow you to upload a mailing list and spit those bad boys out ASAP. Again, when you're not writing copy, the whole thing can happen a lot faster. And if you can't get to it this year, plan for it for next year. Postcards are a great way to send a mail touch to a high volume of households. But if you're looking for something a little more personal, consider handwritten notes to a much smaller and carefully selected segment of donors. This will either cost you time or money, maybe a little bit of both. If cost effectiveness is your highest value, spend time writing these out yourself, especially if you wanna be able to really personalize them for donors that you know well, or that your ED or your board members know well. But this is not the only way to pull off a handwritten effect. Guess what? There's an app for that. Tools like Thankster and Handwritten, with a Y, can actually pump out handwritten cards at scale. Now it's not necessarily cheap, depending on the service you choose. Each card will cost you between two and $4. Uh, if you're sending these cards, however, to high likelihood donors or high dollar value donors or really loyal donors, that's the way to squeeze the most ROI out of whatever it is that you can spend on something like that. Now let's talk about the upcoming wonderkind of omnichannel fundraising, SMS messages. We're not talking about text to donate here. You're still sending people to the Washington Gives platform to make their donations on their mobile devices. But as a solicitation tactic, SMS has some distinct advantages. Number one is open rates. Studies show that subscribers who receive texts from nonprofits they support open them 97 to 99% of the time. That is literally four times better than commercial email marketing messages, which hover around 20% open rates on average. Another advantage is the fact that 90 to 92% of your text messages will be read within three minutes of receiving them. Compare that to social media where algorithms are wildly unpredictable and change all the time. You know, even your most loyal supporters may never see your posts. <laughs> even boosted posts and ads, they can't top SMS in this regard. And this means we can expect that if you use SMS during the two day official campaign, there is a high likelihood that they will be seen and opened and acted on within that time frame. You can absolutely use outbound text messaging earlier too, but focus on warm-ups and reminders and save the soliciting for the active fundraising periods. You've also heard me say the word segmentation a lot in this video. Well, nonprofits can segment SMS lists too. You can create lists for new donors, board members, your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, volunteers, etc. And speaking of peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, using SMS for quick reminders and support touches for your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers can be a great way to help their task of fundraising stay top of mind right when you need it to. My final thought is, don't forget stewardship. These channels aren't just for asking. You can find creative ways to apply everything we've talked about today to stewardship too. And I would. There's data that shows that stewarding online donors through analog channels, along with digital channels, makes them more likely to give again than keeping them in a digital silo. That's it for today. Keep calm and fundraise on.